Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. We are here for the second top four match, and we're gonna feature Jamie Dixon and Michelle Gaffelli. And I'm here next to Barish Avkos now for this game. Hello, and welcome back. I mean, our second top four game, uh, we want to find out who is joining Lee Provost for the final game yeah. uh, just after this game. But for now, we have Michele Gaffelli against Jamie Dixon. I'm uh, really excited to see both players here featured in our. We have featured them before, of course. If you're successful, you will find yourself once again on stream. Now, Michele against Jamie, Italy against Great Britain. Let's see if Italy can take home another tournament here. Yeah, Italy's been doing so well this season. Um, I believe like the top six are almost all Italians, yep. and in NCP points, that is. Uh, and Michele is just going for another Italian Day 2 invite here. And I think with the points he got right now, he's pretty safe at the moment. Yeah, being in the semifinals, he's at 900, I believe 49 points, which is pretty safe for top 16 in Europe. Um, at I think at the moment the numbers are like 10 out of 16 players are from Italy going to yeah, Waltz, wow, skipping crazy. Day 1, going straight to Day 2. Amazing performance. We saw that before in 2015 from Germany. Now Italy really dominating, but for now, let's give it up for Michele and Gavelli, and let's go for their teams once again. So on Jamie's side, we have Tapu Koko, uh, Kangaskhan, that Landris, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, and Bravery. And then on Michele's side, we have that Raichu, Landris, Charizard, Nihiligo, Gastodon, and Cresselia. Yeah, uh, something I really want to point out here is I really like how the Nihiligo looks on Michele's side. If you look at uh, Jamie's team, the Tapu Koko doesn't want to face it, uh, the Tapu Lele doesn't, uh, Tapu Fini doesn't want to face it, Braviary is scared of it, and Incineroar doesn't want to face it either. Um, he basically he has the he has the Landers, of course. With uh, we saw that it's a, uh, a Choice Car variant with Earth Power, uh, which should be doing a lot of damage. Um, and I think the interesting part as well, I don't think we saw uh, the Nihiligo on stream yet for Michele. Uh, I don't think we have seen it yet. So we don't know what it is, what kind of set it's running. Um, if it's something what we saw earlier on stream, something like Adrenaline Orb, it could be really mm -hmm. threatening for Jamie's team. That is one option. And I think you just pointed it out, but let me stress it out once again. And I league a great Pokemon because, first of all, it's a special attacker, so it's not... Um, uh, no impact from Intimidate, from Incineroar or Landorus there. So he can go for his strong attacks without being lowered. And then it's super effective against... Like, if he has hidden power, then he has five out of six Pokemon super effective on that team. So that is super good for him. But yep. then Gastrodon is also having a really good time there. Mm -hmm. um, very good against <coughs> uh, Tapu Koko, Incineroar, Landris, and then Ice Beam could also deal a lot of damage to Barry Reed. But we're yep. about to jump into game one here. Michele Gavelli from Italy against Jamie Dixon from the UK. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a fake out lead, a Kangaskhan and Braviary, maybe first even a Raichu Charizard mm -hmm. on, on Michele's side. Uh, they both have fake out pressure available. And they both have Tailwind pressure as well, and I wouldn't be surprised if that is the way that they're both going to go. And we see a Landers Braviary on Jamie's side. Very interestingly, he potentially saw the threat of Nihiligo and wanted to go straight with that um, Charizard. But looking at the leads, Charizard once again has a pretty good time just firing off heat waves to start from the beginning. Yeah, and we know that this uh, Landers is Choice Scarf, so it's not able to protect. And anything like a heat wave or a flame charge is going to do a lot of damage in that slot. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're Jamie, what you might want to do here is you might want to switch out your Landers, uh, maybe protect your Braviary, go for Incineroar, get a fake out pressure again, and make sure that you maybe can get up your Tailwind afterwards. Yeah, that is um, a great play. But I wouldn't be surprised if Michele just already sets up his own Tailwind. Maybe goes for a fake out in Landers just to be safe uh, and set up Tailwind here. So yeah, there is a Kangaskhan. Uh, let's see if Fake Out Tailwind is one option. Usually when he went for Tailwind, he didn't Mega Wolf, but that is yeah. actually what we're going to see. So it sets up the Sun, and that might indicate that he's actually going for a super um, super strong fire bo like draw Sun Boosted fire attacks here. Yeah, and a non-Mega Kangaskhan does not want to take that at all. It's going to be a lot of damage, and the Fake Out is going to go into the Kangaskhan slot. Yeah, and that's exactly what I talked about. Fa combination of Fake Out on Heat Wave, going straight for an attack, getting the burn Ooh. on Kangaskhan. That's very lucky on that end. But there is this Z move. And thanks to its ability, you can lower that attack set anyway. So, in neutral, uh, based from neutral attack, going a supersonic sky strike. Uh, I think that should go into Charizard and might pick up the KO straight away. I'm pretty sure it's going to be able to pick up the KO. Charizard's not that defensively bulky usually, and Braviary has a lot of attack investment. Um, and we see now how much damage this is going to do. And it's going to take it right down, yeah. Uh, so interesting play. We were expecting Tailwind from both sides, maybe. Uh, but neither one of them is actually going for the Tailwind. Um, they just decide, okay, I just want to get off some damage. I want to make sure that uh, my opponent already took a lot of damage before setting up Tailwind. Uh, and instead, they both don't even set up the Tailwind in the first place. Yeah. Intimidate is a great way to uh, shut down Kangaskhan, but burning it is even more important, like, uh, even stronger in this case. And yes, he lost his Charizard, 
trading his Charizard for a strong Heatwave in Sun, burning the Kangaskhan, bringing Bravery down to 64 HP. Uh, yes, you lost your Charizard, but it doesn't look too bad for Mikaela at this point. No, and the interesting part about Mikaela's team as well is if you look at Jamie's team, um, maybe he's kind of struggling for deals, for ways to hit this Gastrodome. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have a Grass type. And he has his land race, his Tapu so there's a lot of Pokemon that really don't want to face this Gastron at all. So if maybe if you're if you're Jamie, you kinda of want to target that down at some point. Yeah, and usually you have your Kangaskhan, but it's normal type attacks, it can deal a lot of damage to basically any Pokemon that yeah. isn't resisting that. But now being burned, that falls away, uh, and having Z move used as well, only going for that Brave Bird, uh, won't take too much damage to that. No, we're gonna see how much damage it's gonna do, and it doesn't even take it to half. Uh, so that's a really bulky Gastron. It should be able to retaliate with that Ice Beam. And yeah, we see the Braviary go down there. And I think if you're Jamie, you're still you're still in an okay position. Uh, the thing is, uh, I, he, he probably really wished that his Kangaskhan wasn't burned, um, because that might have been able to knock out the Gastron in the next turn with From frustration. Here, yeah. um, but now he's still in a decent position. Uh, he has still has a Scarf Landorus in the back for that Raichu, um, and we're not sure what his last Pokemon is. Um, we have yet to see what is coming out. Let's yeah. see if it Lander is coming back in. Uh, but then Lander is having no bravery next to it. Can't easily go for that Earthquake. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can't sacrifice Kangaskhan, but then he has his uh, Lander is locked into Earthquake. And if there's a Tapu Koko in the back, it won't appreciate taking any Earthquake. Uh, no, I think we saw that it was a special uh, Scarf variant as well. Uh, so it's carrying Earth Power. I think we saw Hidden Power Ice as well in one of the earlier matches. Um, so instead, he's going to switch out into Tapu Fini. Um, which doesn't really threaten the Gastrodon, but it's able to set up Calm Minds uh, next to it. So at least it's it's pressuring it in that way. Um, but if we see him from that Raichu, that it, it carries a uh, knockoff, which could be really annoying for this top of Fini, just immediately losing his berry and basically losing a lot of its bulk. But it's going for a Volt Switch instead. Yeah, so it goes to the Volt Switch, picks up the KO on Kangaskhan and switches out here. Uh, going back to... I think we haven't seen the last Pokemon no. yet. Charizard taken out, and we can assume it's Landorus here or Cresselia, one of those two. Might join the party here. It is indeed the Landorus. Yeah. So uh, again, still no Nihiligo from uh, Mikele's side here, but we see the Landorus instead. Um, and it's still a decent Pokemon to have in the bag, because we know that uh, Mikele's Landorus is actually the, uh, the Zemo variant. So he's probably going to want to probably switch that out again, because Jamie's going to be able to bring out his Landorus here. First he's going for the Calm Mind with his uh, Top of Vinny, and Gastron just going to recover up again. And yeah, it's just such a tough Pokemon for, for Jamie to break here. Yeah, we haven't seen... Uh the berry hasn't broke yet. No. So it has still his berry intact and back to full health here. So Gaston in a really great spot. Landris from Jamie now on the field, but uh, I think the Intimidate is really important here to take that potential Z move going yeah. into that slot. But on the other side, Tebufini boosted with Calm Mind here. We'll be able to do a lot of damage within uh, Moon Blast into that Gastrodon. Should be over 50% now thanks to their boost. Yeah, definitely. And I think we have seen all moves on Gastrodon. There's no clear smog, so you can't take away any boost from that Tebufini either. So let's see if Landorus goes for that Z move and how much damage that can take. On the other side, Righteous in the back didn't go for knockoff though, went for wall switch. So Tebufini still has his very active. Yeah, so at some point Michele probably wants to knock off the berry, but uh, he's going to switch out his into Raichu here, which might take a lot of damage, uh, depending on what this lander is going to lock himself into. It's going to be an Earth Power. And he, oh, and he didn't predict the switch, but he went for the Gastrodon. That was crazy. So Earth Power not lowering the special defense, and another coal mine coming off. So he wants to boost, but he, at one point he has to start getting attacks off. And now Raichu is on the field. Um, we have seen Fake Out, Knock Off. I think we have seen Nuzzle before, it won't affect any Pokemon on the field here, but the Ice Beam already took down the Landris, so Jamie down to his last two Pokemon. Yeah, and I think we saw from the earlier matches, it's kind of it's kind of an offensive Gastrodon on uh, Mikele's side here. Um, and yeah, now he's now he still has the pressure, and you still have the Z move Landris in the back as well. Um, but this type of Fini, it does have the potential to maybe win this 1A, 1F3. If, if you want any Pokemon, you probably want the Finny at this point, mm -hmm. um, because the Gastrodon is not going to do a lot of damage to it. We saw that the Raichu is Assault Vest. Uh, so it's not going to be able to encore this Finny into anything. So you can protect to make sure that yeah. you don't uh, get a fake out. But uh, Mikaela reading into that, going for a recover, he was safe thanks to that for, uh, fake out anyway. Mm -hmm. So Gaston pulled back. Um, Raichu having Wall Switch as one of his moves. And then, I mean, you don't want to go for um, Muddy Waters too early. No, no you, you don't want to boost the Gaston. Exactly. exactly. That's Even that's though it just has uh, Earth Power. And Tapu Fini is a plus to special defense. Now they knock off, knocking off the berry, very important so that uh, Tapu Fini has no recovery move. And there's the plus two Moon Blast going into the Raichu. Thanks to the Solvers wow. taking that move. Yeah, that's really impressive. A plus two Moon Blast, Raichu just takes that really well. And it's able to just, but I don't know if you really want to go for a Volt Switch here because the landers in the back is actually really important. And unlike Raichu, I'm not sure if it can actually take a plus two Moon Blast. 
Um, because we saw it's not like one of the Assault Fest variants, it's that Z-Move variant. And that's probably something that Michele really needs to have in the back in order to win this game. Because Gastron is not doing enough damage to this Tapu Fini. And Tapu Fini should be able to win that one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, one play will be switch out your Gastron. Oh, he goes for that Nuzzle yeah. play. He doesn't oh, want to risk the Landers there. He doesn't want to go for Volt Switch. And even though Nuzzle in Messy Terrain is not going to work, uh, he'd rather just not risk it at all. And But it looks like Jamie was maybe predicting a Landers oh, wow. switching. Oh, and he misses the Raichu. Misses the Raichu and gets a boost for that um, Gastrodon. Oh, which and the special defense drop. A lot of come in handy here for um, Michele, because now special defense is only a plus one anymore. Wall switch will deal more damage. There's no barrier for recovery. And it looks really well. And since Misty Terrain is over, that Nuzzle will now paralyze the uh, Turbo Fini, giving Michele just more odds, uh, more odds here. And he even gets it. Uh, just kind of rubbing salt in the wounds here. Going for an Earth Power. And I think after this, a Nuzzle or Volt Switch or any kind of attack is going to be able to knock out the Stop of Vinny. And Michele is, is going to be taking this game one here in yeah, a kind of convincing fashion. Because that Gastrodon just stayed on the field. And now again, it's at full health. And it's, it's just such a threat uh, for Jamie to handle. Yeah, Michele very happy here. Uh, making sure to circle the first game as the winner here. <coughs> But now we're still in a best of three. I think crucial in this game was taking out the bravery early, yep. getting a second KO and the burn on the, the Kangaskhan. Burn. The burn was actually kind of big. Uh, and then it, might have, it might have helped the Gastron survive uh, yep. a little bit better. Um, but still, yeah, uh, yeah, those those things can happen. They're, it's not like he won only because of hacks. No, he, he played really well. And Gastron, he just played it really, really smartly. He headed in the back, made sure that he first uh, knocked out the bravery, uh, did a lot of damage to Kangaskhan. In order for Gastron to just start walling the rest of Jamie's team, um, which is exactly what he did. And I'm still kind of surprised that he didn't bring the Nihiligo, um, mm -hmm. but it looked like he didn't need it. Because uh, I would I would think that he might was he might wanted to pick that over over the Landers potentially. Um, yeah, Landers didn't do much here, no. but if uh, if he would if he wasn't intimidated in the one turn, he could have went for the Z move, dealing a lot of damage mm -hmm. to Tabufini. Yeah. So having that Z move potential is just great against. I mean, at least three Pokemon. The other ones are flying. So uh, no, two are flying. So like against Tabu Coco, Tabu Fini, Kangaskhan, and Cinderor, uh, that Z move is really powerful. Make yeah, but on the other hand, you have the Braviary, of course. So you you can't really bring Landers that freely. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe the Deny League or switch in for this game too here. Uh, but on the other hand. If you're Michele, your game one plan went pretty well, so there's not really any reason to change it up. So I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't do that at all. But if you're Jamie, yeah, I think he needs to yeah, just offer a lot more offensive pressure. And there's once again the combination of Landris and Bravery. Uh, having that offensive pressure from um, Landris while making sure that your opponent can fully switch in any Intimidate. But on Michele's side, we see that right to Charizard once again. And let's yeah. see if he sacrifices Charizard for a Heat Wave once again. And if that Heat Wave is connecting, uh, and maybe fishing a burn again. So a lot of potential plays here. If he gets the burn on Bravery, for example, Charizard would survive the Super Sonic Sky Strike. That's one. Yeah, the interesting play. part here as well is that in, against this kind of lead, you probably want to switch in something like Incineroar. But uh, looking at what Michele brought last time with the Landris and the Gastrodon, Incineroar is maybe not the greatest pick at all. So it's kind of maybe a really interesting team combination for Michele that kind of stops Jamie from, at some point, just having the right switch in. And it looks like he doesn't switch in Incineroar either, so he might not have it, not brought it again. Yeah, so no switches. Let's see if there's a simple fake out into Landris and a heat wave, or if there's any over predicting stuff. So there's a fake out going to Landris, as I just mentioned, and there's the heat wave. Okay, connecting yeah. to both Pokemon, uh, we saw how Bravery survived the last one. Both Pokemon actually survived, and he goes for a Tailwind play this time. Very interesting because at the moment he has a choice carve Landris on the field, and he could have also picked up the KO on that charge, but. Yeah, exactly. And we know that it's a choice carve special variant, so I'm not sure about how bulky this Raichu is, but. Um, there's a potential chance that it may be able to take a, a potential Earth Power or anything. Uh, but I think if you're Jamie, uh, you're probably just going to want to go for the Z move into Charizard. Uh, if you're Michele, because you don't want to switch in the Landorus, you don't want to boost this Braviary even more. Um, and we saw how Charizard um, took down quite a few very strong uh, Pokemon in the 2016 yeah. World Championship as a Solar Zarian. So I can, I can think of uh, it takes care of a Landorus as well. But it switches out actually, uh, and Charizard protects here, doesn't want to waste. Um, risk any strong attack going into the slot, but Earth Power into what was the right choose now, the Gastrodon, dealing about 40-30% uh, damage, and oh, a Brave wow. doubling up into the slot, no Z-move though, this might barely hang on here, let's see. Yeah, it does, wow. So good read by Jamie there, reading the Protect on that Charizard, um, and it's probably good for him that he didn't uh, knock out the Gastron there, because otherwise we could have just gotten a free switch into Raichu, uh, now that, that slot on the Charizard side, 
Uh, it's probably free for just go for maybe a supersonic sky strike into that slot. Um, but on the other hand, if you're Mikele, you might want to switch your Raichu into that slot. So there are kind of mind games there. For Jamie, of course, he can go really wild and earth power the Charizard, but we're gonna see what's happening. He's still gonna take his time because he needs to make sure that these tailwind turns really count, and he needs to make sure that he doesn't allow Mikele to get these kind of free switch ins because mm -hmm. he needs as much damage as possible while tailwind is still up. Yeah, and looking at Jamie's Pokemon, both are already down in the rad, yeah. so they won't be able to take too many hits. I think any move going into those slots will pick up the KO. So mm -hmm. yes, you have your offensive pressure on the uh, on the board, but you want to make sure that you either pick up KOs or preserve your own Pokemon. So that's right. exactly what's happening here. Uh, Landry is switching off for Tapu Fini now on the field in the sun. Won't be able to do a lot of damage with water type attacks. Well, let's see how long this uh, someone stay up. On the other side, Charizard switching out as well, and it looks like Jamie read right into yeah. that. He looks like a little bit popping off, uh, being happy there. So there's a protect from Gastelon. Maybe he went for a Z move into that slot. Um, that's Exactly what we're going to see. Yeah, so I'm assuming this is going into the Gastrodon, otherwise he wouldn't be that happy at first. Um, but the Protect's going to stop that. Uh, maybe it's going to go into Raichu, but Raichu should be able to take that from full health, because it's just a resisted attack. Uh, like we were saying, uh, the Earth powering the Charizard, it would have been a really high play if he actually did yep. that. But of course, this is top 4, and these kind of plays are really scary, because if you get that wrong, you completely lose the game. Uh, Especially if you're down one game exactly. already. So I, 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 I respect that, that he's not going for that. Uh, but he puts the Gastrodon in kind of a low health, but with the Raichu now, he can just go for the Fake Out into Brave here and just recover. Uh, the Slap with Finny shouldn't be able to knock out either of those Pokémon with, mm -hmm. uh, without any of the boosts that it has yet. So, yeah, Mikele is just able to kind of stall out the Tailwind. Yeah, very good, playing around that Tailwind, yeah. now having that Raichu on the field, not taking any damage, having that Fake Out potential, stalling out the last turn and recovering up health on that Gastrodon, so it's a bigger threat later in the game. And that's exactly what we see, there's a Fake Out though, going into Bravery, so, Kalman setting up on Tapu Fini, boosting its special attack and special defense, so dealing yeah. more damage and is able to take more hits from that wall switch Raichu and an Earth Power from Gastrodon, which is just recovering, healing up 50% of his health, now almost back to full health. And Kangaskhan, this time on the field, this time full HP as well, and not burned, very important. Yeah, and we got Misty Terrain now as well, so he doesn't have to worry about that at all. So that's, uh, that's really fortunate for, for Jamie Dixon there. Um, and the thing we know as well is that this Raichu is actually a Salt Fest, so it's kind of a free double up into that slot. Um, so I'm assuming that he goes for a return and a move loss into the Raichu slot, and I think anything that's going to switch in is going to go down to that combination. Yeah, and somehow Mikila, the start, uh, the turn hasn't really started yet, but Mikila didn't look very happy about that. So let's see if there's actually ignoring the fake out, just going straight for a um, for a combination of return. Oh, but there's he goes the fake, for out, fake out actually. Fake out into Charizard. Very happy not that the frustration or return knocked out that Charizard already. And there's a Moonblast. Plus one Moonblast, we saw how much that did to Gastrodon, but this time it's going to Charizard. Not getting a special defense, uh, special attack drop. Earth Power slowly chipping down the Kangaskhan. Yeah, so Jamie didn't want to double that slot with return. Uh, maybe he was worried about a potential knockoff on the top of Fini, thinking that he really needs to bury uh, in order to win this game. Uh, and maybe he's also confident that even though Charizard come in, that his Kangaskhan might be faster as well. Um, so that's, that's, there's, there's still good options for him as well. And Mikael's Charizard takes a lot of damage though in the in the process, but this Gastron is still looking to be a problem. But on the other hand, Jamie is just going to be able to set up not a, a lot of Calm Mines at this point. And Mikael is really lacking the offensive pressure right now to really stop that type of Vinny. Yeah, we were talking about Kangaskhan and Charizard, which one is faster. If they're both trained uh, at max speed, then they actually speed tight. Yeah. Uh, but we have yet to see if uh, they opted for like a timid and jolly variation, uh, respectively, or if Kangaskhan, for example, is adamant to deal more damage. Yeah, I'm but assuming yeah. that this Charizard is actually kind of bulky, because we saw it lift the Rock Slide earlier in one of the sets. Um, so it needs a lot of bulk in order to do that. But it is still faster than Kangaskhan, though. Yeah, going for that Flamethrower, uh, it is not enough to pick up the go, not getting a burn either. Frustration, though, should it retaliate and get the knock out on Charizard. So Mechanica Valley down to free Pokemon here. Uh, and another Moomba is just going into that Protector on Gastrodon's end. Yeah, so I think it kind of depends now what uh, Mikele's last Pokémon is here. Uh, if it is that Landorus, um, he's still going to struggle a lot against this Topofini, I feel like. Uh, he still has the, the Raichu in the back, of course, which is going to help him a little bit. Um, but Jamie actually takes the, the uh, takes the Pokémon advantage here going into uh, this turn. What I would like to see here from Mikele Gavali is uh, Predicting the switch out of Kangaskhan into Landorus and going for an Ice Cream into that slot mm. to catch that off bar because Tempo yeah. is in danger of getting knocked out by a potential Tectonic Rage here. So you have to switch in your Intimidate and I hope 
for Mikele that he can read into that and go for a strong Ice Beam into that slot. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for the U-turn into the Kangaskhan and as well as the Ice Beam to cover that. Um, Jimmy is smartly just going for his Braviary instead. Uh, he's rather want to sack that than his uh, Choice Scarf Lander is. Uh, just goes for a protect, just in case that Tectonic Rage is going to come. But yeah, I think we're going to see what you just mentioned, uh, Barris. There is the U-turn uh, switching out and uh, potentially an Ice Beam. I think it was very clever to sacrifice your Bravery here because then you can bring in your Landorus mm -hmm. and don't have to fear that it straight goes down to an Ice Beam. So Raichu is now on the field though, having that fake out pressure. And there's the Ice Beam just yeah. as a set going into the uh, slot, picking up the K on Bravery, but now um, Jamie is free to bring in either Kangaskhan or Landorus here. Yeah, and I'm assuming that he probably wants to bring in uh, Kangaskhan first, maybe, because if you, if you bring in Raichu, uh, if you bring in Landorus, it's just going to be a, a fake-out Ice Beam probably into that slot. Yeah, but uh, Kangaskhan won't appreciate that fake-out no. Ice Beam combination either because it's down in HP. So it looks like Michele uh, starting to deal a lot of damage early in the game is now in really dominant position here. It's yeah. only that Tapu Fini here, but it wasn't able to um, take home the first game either. So if Michele plays down the end game safely here, then it might be the case that he takes the second game as well. Yeah, it looks like it might come down in the same way as game one uh, actually came down as well. Um, this time the top of Fini isn't knocked off yet, so... And we see this fake out, and it's not going to be able to knock out the Kangaskhan from here. So there's the boosted Moonblast, but we saw Raichu survive the pl uh, plus two Moonblast, so no wonder that it takes the plus one either. Uh, there's the ice fake out Ice Beam, as we just said, and Kangaskhan goes down. Jamie is down to his last two Pokemon, Landris, Choice Garf, and that Tapu Fini here. So he can't easily go for Earthquake. He would, uh, he would damage his own Pokemon. So it, it's like a little bit desperate move. But if Choice Garf Landris is one of your last Pokemon, you have to go for the Rock Slide. Uh, yeah, if it has it, because we saw that it's a special Landris. We and I think we only saw Earth Power and HP Ice so far. Uh, maybe U Turn as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a tough tough move to lock into. I mean, otherwise you would definitely go for Rock Slide. If he has it here, I'm sure he's going to go for it. Yeah, um, otherwise one of, one of the other ways maybe is that you maybe catch the, the Landorus from Michele's side on switching with HP Ice, uh, which could be another way to maybe just win this game in a different way. Uh, or just go for the Earth Power onto this Raichu and just make, make sure that you can't be knocked off. Oh, and Jamie right. is popping off. Did he go for that HP Ice? I mean, if he... If he's locked into the HP Ice though, he won't be able to take care of that right no, through afterwards. That's, that's the problem. But yes, that Hidden Power Ice that might come off here uh, will deal a lot of damage. It is oh, exactly and he goes Hidden for Power it. Ice going into the opposing Landorus. Is it enough to pick up the KO? It oh, is not. not. It barely stands the Hidden Power Ice, but the second one, thanks to being Choice Card, will take care. Or the Moombas falling up into the slot. On the other side though, Landorus will go down to an Ice Beam yep. here from that Gastrodon. So Jamie once again is down to his last Pokemon being Tepofini. Uh, and Raichu is still there to knock it off, so the berry will be gone soon. And um, Gastron will just be able to recover um, and slowly taking down that Tepofini. Yeah, but Tepofini can just boost at some point, where Gastron might not be able to recover it, it out mm -hmm. of the damage that it can do. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting. But I think one thing we should mention as well is now Jimmy's just going to obviously go for Protect and maybe try to get, up, get rid of this Raichu as soon as possible. But with the Assault Vest, it's going to be really tricky. Yeah, uh, I just another Moonblast won't be enough at this point. No, no, he it won't like be. boosts or like two Moonblasts. That gives more time to Gastron to start uh, dealing damage and maybe you get some special defense right. drops with that Earth Power. Um, but yeah, game is not totally over yet, but it's definitely favorable for Mikele. Yeah, uh, and one thing I want to mention as well, which is in Mikele's favor, uh, Jamie only has one minute left in his own timer. So if he's going to go into this, like, this Stall War, oh, and he also gets Paralysis now, which means that Jamie even has less chance to move and oh, and he gets the full Paralysis immediately. So yeah, paralyzing first gives you more odds. You can knock off uh, afterwards easily. So Barry will be gone either way. Um, I was just talking about how Raichu will take another moon blast if it's not critting. Um, so you're Raichu in a safe spot to go for another first, expecting your knockoff to come off now. And that's exactly yeah. what we see. So the Barry is gone as well. And then it's just a matter of time until uh, the combination of Raichu and Gaston, which actually outspeeds Tabufini, which is paralyzed now, will take down the Tabufini. Yeah. There's a special defense and drop special as well. Defense drop. Just, just a little bit more solid in wounds for Jamie there. Um, but yeah, Michele just kind of playing the same game that he did in game one. Um, he knows his wing conditions and he knows that this kind of combination, he can able, he's, he's able to take out the Tabufini. He doesn't need the Nihiligo per se. Uh, and the way he's, yeah, he yeah we just really see the last attacks coming off. But there's a wall switch that is not quite enough yet, but the Earth for taking down. Tapu Fini yeah, and Michele wow. Gavelli are our second finalist joining Lee in the finals. Yeah, so we got an Italian UK show off in uh, in the finals now, and yeah, really well played by Michele there. Uh, he obviously knew his win conditions, what he what he needs to do to win, uh, and that Gastrodon just was such a big part of that of that game there.
Um, Jamie went for the, the, kind of the Tailwind strategy, hoping to out-damage Michele, but Michele just had enough switching potential to stall it out, and then afterwards just able to kind of have enough bulk to just resist all these attacks that, that Jamie threw at him and just retaliate with, with KO's back. Yeah, we will talk about Mikita in the finals, but for Jamie, it's incredible. He doesn't visit quite a lot of tournaments, but when he does, he finishes quite high. Like, mm. we had his top eight finish at the European International Championship. Yeah. Now he's here in Sheffield. He eliminated in top four, but still amazing performance. So give it up for uh, Jamie. Yeah. And we'll be back with the winner's interview of Michele, which we haven't, which we have featured yesterday twice, but we couldn't talk to him. So I'm really excited to talk to him before we're going to a short break and then join Lee and Michele in the finals of our Sheffield Regionals. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back, Pokemon players. I am here with the winner of that last top four match, Michele Gaffelli. Michele Gaffelli. Sorry, I keep, <laughs> I keep mispronouncing your name. It's really difficult to tell your name. Everyone like can pronounce well yeah, my yeah. name. Like everyone except the Italians, I guess. <laughs> yeah, now we can finally have you on stream now. Now that your parents are here, so that's that's great. Now we can have a winners interview. And uh, yeah, how are you feeling after that match? Are you ready for the finals? Uh, yeah. I'm Almost ready. I'm feeling happy because I should lock my day two invite right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I l had a little bit of luck, I guess, on game two and on game one as well. But that's part of the game. And I think in these months, I, um, I mean, in the, la month, in the last month, I like tried to not get hungry when I get asked. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now I'm just 
thinking. I think I'm mentally improved as well. But yeah, I think that's really important because we, yeah. we heard that from people like Ben Kiriakou as well, yeah. like really veteran players. I think all of these advices are don't get too fed up and like, oh, it's only hacks. I only lost because yeah. of hacks. Uh, you got to focus on your own game. You got to be ready for that. And I think, yeah, I think you did that really well. Um, yeah, that Gastron, that put in a lot of work again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you, how, did, how did you feel about your team? Because I think you've been using it a lot, right? In, uh, in local events as well? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I tried the, te the team uh, like two months ago. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm gonna talk honestly. I copied the team from a guy on Showdown. Okay, yeah. Uh, I've seen that team, I was like, mm, that's cool, that's a cool, like, that's a cool core. Nailigo and Charizard, yeah, are, I think, strong together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they kind of lose against Lando, but like I have Cresselli, I have Gastrodon, I have also an Intimidate. And the first version of the team was uh, with Itmontop and Bulu over okay. uh, Raichu and Cresselia. Huh. And, but uh, I was just um, a little bit like losing against Coco stuff. I like wanted to just add um, a fake out there uh, who can just support better Charizard than right. maybe Itmontop. Yeah, I would have had like double intimidate with Montop and Charizard, but I thought Raichu would have been better. And when I just uh, was looking for the item for uh, Raichu, I thought uh, Sash wouldn't have been like better than a Soul Vest because, like, uh, if, if I had the Sash, I would have lost the last mm -hmm. match, for example. Yeah. Because um, Fini at plus one can deal a lot of damage, uh, even uh, yeah, or Raichu because he's pretty frail. Um, so I think a, a Soul Vest is like perfect for um, this kind of situation where maybe you're not full life, but you have to take maybe Heat Wave or Air Power or even Psychic or even Moonblast from Tapu Fini. And I removed the Bulu uh, because I wanted some a Pokemon which could have been better against the Mirror. Right. And I added Cresselia because it's pretty good against the Mirror. Like sometimes I led with Cresselia and it, it, it just stays until the last turn to just pump Icy Wind, and that's kind of annoying because yeah. uh, like mm, there there is no one that can eat very hard Cresselia. It's in, if it's intimidated. Well, there is maybe a Dragon which can eat hard the special side but it's kind of rare yeah what i thought was interesting about your cresselia was that you, you don't have trick room but you no. have moonlight instead yeah i, I have yeah. moonlight because uh, like i need a recovery because the cresselia needs to be uh, to stay in the in the field much longer yeah and i have trick room on nailigo instead and it's cool because sometimes i led a couple of times nailigo and cresselia in the last tournaments not yesterday or today and like someone Maybe they lead with a taunt, uh, a taunt user, and they taunt Microcellia mm -hmm. to stop the trick room. But I get the trick room with Dynaligo, and maybe ah. I attack the the Gengar or is um, the other Pokemon next to him. And I chose Psyshock because it, yeah, it can deal better against um, Tapu Fini mm -hmm. and against Como because normally you Cresselia loses. I mean, if it's not uh, Psychium Z, it should lose against Como. Yeah. But if you like have Kalma, uh, sorry, Psyshock and Moonlight, you're like uh, in a better position because you can just deal with Como and against is um, is like Pokemon in the right. team. Yeah. And we also have a fortune cookie for you. Well, let's oh. see, let's see what your <laughs> fortune you. is going to be for finals. <laughs> so yeah, open it. You can open it up. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, I what it don't says. think I can then eat this biscuit to have luck. Because oh no, you don't. <laughs> you don't have to eat it. It's fine. You can just. You have to open it like this. Yeah, yeah. And then just read what's uh, what's on there. Uh, uh, you have to go to the other side. Yeah. Okay. So to say you don't have time means that other things are most important. Uh, more important. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's referring to how quickly you make your moves. I think I think that's really what what separates you from other players. We saw um, some players taking a lot of time, and I see you every time. You're really confident in your place. You, you're locking mm. your moves in like five seconds, six seconds. Yeah. Um, you just you really have a game plan up ahead, right? Before yeah, you start the game. Yeah. Maybe that's because I've a lot of experience with this team. Mm. I mean, I've been using this team uh, for two months, I think. Right. And I tested almost every single matchup. Uh, so I knew, so I know what I should do and what I have to do against almost everything. So I think that's why I choose the move like very fast.
Right, okay. Well, that's really cool to hear. And uh, well, we'll see you later in finals. So uh, we'll be going back into a little break right now. But don't tune away. We'll be going to finals very shortly. So I'll see you later.